Hello everyone, this is Heather Whitman here at the Highlands Museum and Discovery Center in Ashland, Kentucky. This is another one of our series of videos we are doing during the COVID-19 outbreak. And today we're going to be talking about the gentleman pictured here. This is Paul G. Blazer. He's a very well-known man from our area. Um, we even have a high school named after him. Although I have to admit that when I was a student at high school, I was not sure why it was named after him. I've learned a great deal since then, and so I'm hoping this video will tell a little bit of that history as to why we have Paul G. Blazer High School. Well, Paul Blazer was born in Illinois in 1890, and he started to show a business, um, business motivation at a, a very young age. He started selling magazine subscriptions to make money as a teenager, and we actually have some advertisements from that time. Um, he became so successful at this that he was able to hire an adult secretary and he paid her out of his profits. He studied at the University of Chicago where he met his future wife, Georgia or Gigi Monroe. And he signed up to enlist during World War I, however, unfortunately a bad back kept him from fighting. It was something that would bother him pretty much his entire life was those back issues. He started his career in oil in 1919 at the Southern Refining Company in Lexington, Kentucky. But by 1923, he had left that job. He went to work for a man named J. Fred Miles, who owned the Swiss Oil Company. Miles wanted him to be the general manager of a new refinery, and Blazer was permitted to pick the location of the refinery. He chose the old Catlicksburg Refinery, which is located in nearby Catlicksburg, Kentucky. It was purchased in 1924, and they renamed it the Ashland Refining Company. We've got a picture here of that Catlicksburg Refinery from 1931. Um, Blazer immediately went to work. He worked very long, long hours, um, sometimes almost 3 o'clock in the morning, but he managed to turn the refinery around in just a year. Um, Miles eventually left that company, and Blazer was president of both Ashland Oil and Swiss Oil by 1935. It was at that time that they moved the headquarters of the company to downtown Ashland. A photo here of that old headquarters. Um, that building was located just down the street from the museum here on Winchester Avenue. And it was also at this time that the Swiss name began to recede. Um, Ashen was outperforming its parent company, and by 1936, the two companies merged to become the Ashland Oil and Refining Company, a name that many people in Ashland are very familiar with. During the Great Depression, uh, the company managed to survive and even turn a profit, a success that was attributed to, Bra to Blazer. Um, during World War II, all refineries, of course, were asked to increase production, and Ashland Oil was among those and Blazer worked with the government to build a new aviation plant to help with the war effort. It was also during the war that Blazer started to notice some health issues. Um, he took the position of chairman and chief executive officer and he hired a new president, G. Howard Marshall, who's pictured here with Blazer in 1948. We have another video that we did um, about Marshall's experiences during the war. Um, that involves Hitler's telephone here at the museum and that video is also available on our YouTube and also on Facebook You should check it out if you haven't already. I also have in this case um, Blazer's hard hat that he would wear on the job and we also have a globe This is what used to sit on the top of the old um, gasoline pumps Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about Blazer as a boss. Um, he was known to have very high expectations. As we know, he was a hard worker himself, so he expected a lot out of his employees. But he was also very interested in their lives. He wanted them to have social lives. The company hosted picnics, softball teams, bowling teams, all kinds of different clubs. And something that they became very well known for were the annual Christmas party. Um, I have here a program from one in 1948. This was always a big to-do in the area. People have fond memories of the Ashland Oil Christmas parties. Um, they were very lavish. They had circus performers there. Um, employees' children were invited and they were always given wrapped presents and Santa Claus always made an appearance towards the end. 
Now, as I mentioned, Blazer was very hardworking and worked long hours, but family was very important to him. He and Gigi had three children, Paul Jr., Doris, and Stuart. Paul Jr. went to work for the company in 1947. According to records, he received no favors from management, so he had to find his own way in the company. Doris also worked for the family business for a time during World War II. She later served on several boards in the Tri-State, including the YWCA and the Huntington Museum of Art. Stewart served his country in the Army during the Korean War, and he unfortunately was killed in action in 1952. Not long after his parents started the Stuart Blazer Foundation that same year that helped to fund many projects in Ashland, including the Ashland Tennis Center. Ashland was, uh, or excuse me, Blazer was always very interested in education. It was something that was very dear to him. Um, as early as 1938, he had started the Blazer Education Fund. And the purpose of this was to provide loans to local students to attend the Ashland Junior College which is now ACTC, or Ashland Community and Technical College. And it wasn't just here locally, he, he provided help to many institutions across the state, um, including Kentucky State College, which is now a university. Um, in 1960, thanks to his efforts, they opened the Paul G. Blazer Library. This was the first time that he had accepted a naming request in the late 1950s, he was approached about naming the new Ashland High School after him, and after some discussion with his family, he accepted, and that school opened in 1962. And here we have a picture of Blazer and his wife um, on the steps of that high school. Now, Blazer was given many awards during his life. Um, he received a number of honorary degrees. Um, also in 1948, he was given the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award. Um, from the University of Kentucky. And that, this is the actual award here that he received. Um, and this was something that was given out every year um, to two students and one citizen. He was the citizen for that year that received it. And it was given to those who had selflessly given to others in the state. Um, he was also honored in 1964 by the uh, National Petroleum News Hall of Fame. Now this was an organization that had been around for over 100 years, but they only had 34 inductees, so that was a huge deal for him to receive that. Now as I mentioned, Blazer started to have some, some health issues in the 40s, and by 1950 he had asked his nephew, Rex Blazer, to take over as president. He began working more and more from home, and he retired in 1957 after several health scares, um, and Rex became the new chief executive. Uh, despite his retirement, Blazer was active in the company up until his death in 1966. Um, this was the first time that the company had closed for a non-holiday. They closed for the day of his funeral, and both the company and Mrs. Blazer received a number of of letters of condolence or of uh, sympathy from various places over the state. The Philippa loss of Paul Blazer. I really like this picture here. Um, this is actually from the Freedom Refinery in Pennsylvania um, having a memorial service for Paul Blazer. So, you know, the, the effects of his loss were felt that far away. And so that's just a little bit of history about um, the founder of one of the most well-known companies that came out of Ashland, Kentucky. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, please like, subscribe, and hopefully we will see you soon here at the museum. We're working on reopening. We don't have a firm date yet, but hopefully things will be back to normal. You, you can come in and see the Paul G. Blazer exhibit yourself. Thanks. Take care.